Bamidbar chapter 11. But the people began complaining about their hardships to Jehovah. When Jehovah heard it, his anger flared up so that fire from Jehovah broke out against them and consumed the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried to Moshe. Moshe prayed to Jehovah and the fire abated. That place was called Tavera, burning, because Jehovah's fire broke out against them. Next, the mixed crowd that was with them grew greedy for an easier life, while the people of Israel, for their part, also renewed their weeping and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt. It cost us nothing. And the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now we're withering away. We have nothing to look at but this man. The man, by the way, was like coriander seed and white like gum resin. The people would go around gathering it and would grind it up in mills or pound it to paste with mortar and pestle. Then they would cook it in pots and make it into loaves that tasted like cakes baked with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp during the night, the man came with it. Moshe heard the people crying, family after family, each person at the entrance to his tent. The anger of Jehovah flared up violently, and Moshe too was displeased. Moshe asked Jehovah, Why are you treating your servants so badly? Why haven't I found favor in your sight, so that you put the burden of this entire people on me? Did I conceive this people? Was I their father, so that you tell me? Carry them in your arms like a nurse carrying a baby to the land you swore to their ancestors? Where am I going to get meat to give this give to this entire people? Because they keep bothering me with their crying and saying, Give us meat to eat. I can't carry this entire people by myself alone. It's too much for me. If you are going to treat me this way, then just kill me outright. Please, if you have any mercy toward me, and don't let me go on being this miserable. Jehovah said to Moshe, Bring me seventy of the leaders of Israel, people you recognize as leaders of the people and officers of theirs. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take some of the spirit which rests on you and put it on them. Then they will carry the burden of the people along with you, so that you won't carry it yourself alone. Tell the people, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, and you will eat meat. Because you cried in the ears of Jehovah, If only we had meat to eat. We had the good life in Egypt. All right, Jehovah is going to give you meat, and you will eat it. You won't eat it just one day, or two days, or five, or ten, or twenty days but a whole month, until it comes out of your nose and you hate it, because you have rejected Jehovah, who is here with you, and distressed him with your crying and asking, why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moshe said, here I am with 600,000 men on foot, and yet you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month? If whole flocks and herds were slaughtered for them, would it be enough? If all the fish in the sea were collected for them, would even that be enough? Jehovah answered Moshe, Has Jehovah's arm grown short? Now you will see whether what I said will happen or not. Moshe went out and told the people what Jehovah had said. Then he collected seventy of the leaders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Jehovah came down in the cloud spoke to him, took some of the spirit that was on him, and put it on the seventy leaders. When the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied, then but not afterwards. There were two men who stayed in the camp, <clears throat> one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the spirit came to rest on them. They were among those listed to go out to the tent, but they, did, they hadn't done so, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moshe, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Yehoshua, the son of Nun, who from his youth up had been Moshe's assistant, answered, My lord Moshe, stop them. 
But Moshe replied, Are you so zealous to protect me? I wish all of Yehovah's people were prophets. I wish Yehovah would put his spirit on all of them. Moshe and the leaders of Israel went back into the camp and Yehovah sent out a wind which brought quails from across the sea and let them fall near the camp, about a day's trip away on each side of the camp and all around it, covering the ground to a depth of three feet. The people stayed up all that day, all, all night, and all the next day gathering the quails. The person gathering the least collected ten heaps. Then they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still in their mouth, before they had chewed it up, the anger of Jehovah flared up against the people, and Jehovah struck the people with a terrible plague. Therefore that place was named Kivrot Hataava, Graves of Greed, because there they buried the people who were so greedy. From Kivrot Hataava, the people traveled to Hatzerot, and they stayed at Hatzeroth.